Now we're going to learn how to estimate the cost of debt. And this one uh, can be relatively time consuming. We're going to stick with our Microsoft example, although I'm not going to calculate uh, every bond. I'll show you why this, is, this can be quite time consuming. Because in order to calculate the cost of debt for a security for a company, you need to know what their current bonds are, the yield of maturity on their current bonds. So with a, bond, with a bond, you're going to always be given a certain amount of information is fixed, and that's going to be the maturity date, coupon payment, and future value. Those three things are always fixed. What changes throughout the life of the bond is going to be the, the price people are willing to pay, and with that price, you can then estimate what is the yield of maturity, and that is what we would use to estimate what the cost of debt for the uh, company is at the time. So what you actually need is all of the company's currently trading bonds to estimate a yield, a bond yield, a cost of bonds using the yield to maturity. Now, we're going to stick with Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft has a lot of bonds outstanding, so there's a tool that's posted in your in your system through Finra that lets you look up the bonds prices of every company. So all the bonds traded from a company. So we're going to use Microsoft. The symbols MF, MSFT. We type it in and we can see right off the bat that we have many, many bonds. Now if you were to select Microsoft as your company, you were going to have to calculate the yield to maturity on every one of these bonds, which may take a very long time and then weight the average, and then you'll have the cost of, and before tax, before tax, cost of debt. And then you learn how to calculate after tax cost of debt next. But so the before tax cost of debt, so right here on this information, let me make it a little bit bigger. We actually have all the information we need because we're given a, so here's the first bond Microsoft has trading on this FINRA markets morningstar.com website. So we have Microsoft, we have our coupon payment. So we have a 1.1% coupon payment. We have the maturity, we have our price, and we actually have the yield here. Now this one, I don't know why it's still listed, because, well, it's actually, it's, it's um, actually maturing, uh, it looks like, today. So that one's going to be a little bit of an odd price, so we can probably just ignore that one. Let's start off with our first one. So we have our Microsoft. This one matures in August 8th of 2021. Its current coupon is 1.55. Its current price is 99.426. With that information, you can, I mean, you, you can actually calculate this on your own, or you can take the yield of maturity on this specific bond as 1.846%. Now the other thing, we actually have to click on this bond right here to actually see how much this bond, how much value is in this bond. So you click on that, and you end up with, you find the outstanding value is right here. So the amount outstanding for this one bond that's maturing in August of 2021 that's yielding, the current yield was, uh, what was the current yield? The current yield was 1.846. So what you're going to have to do is create a new file or a new sheet and we'll call this one bonds and you can have the uh, yield to maturity and value, and this is bond number one. So the yield to maturity of this bond was 1.846, 1.846, and the value was 1.846. Two point seven five million, and make sure that's there's there, that's not in the thousands. Sometimes data is listed in the thousands. It doesn't look like we have that. So this one bond is two point seven five million. So two seven five zero 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 zero. And let's make sure that's oops, 
put an extra zero, so that's good to check. So one less zero. So there we have our 2.75. Now, let's look at the second bond in Microsoft. Second bond in Microsoft is right here. It's this one. This one has a yield to maturity of 1.843. So let's go ahead and type in bond number two. Our yield to maturity was 1.843, 1.843. And let's look at the value of this second bond. The amount outstanding of the second bond is 1.5 million. 1500000. Now, for a company like Microsoft that has many bonds outstanding, this is going to take a very long time. So choose your company carefully. So we would have to do this calculation, but we'll just do it for two for an example. So we have uh, with Microsoft, it looks like they have three pages of bonds. Yeah, so they have a, a significant amount of bonds. We would have to, to, to download every single one of them and then do this. So what you have to do is you want to get a total value of bonds. So the total, the total value of all these bonds is just going to be the sum of all of your bonds. So again, Microsoft, if you're doing this the fully, I want to keep the, keep the tutorials as short as possible. You would have to do it for all uh, 40, it looks like about 40 bonds. So in this case, we have two. So the total value of the bonds is 4.25 million. Now you need to estimate the weight because you're going to get a weighted average of what the bonds, the cost of debt. So our weight is simply this bond divided by our total bond. So the weight in that bond is about 60, you know, 64. I mean, we can make it look a little bit nicer. So that's 65%. And then our next one is obviously going to be uh, 35. But let's go ahead and do the calculation. And let's reduce our decimal place so it looks a little bit better. So now we have a weight. We have yield to maturity. We calculated the weight. And so the weighted yield to maturity is going to be simply is going to be the weight times the yield to maturity. And we can take this same and copy and paste it. So we have two weighted yield to maturities. And we want to take the sum of that. The sum of these is going to be our weighted cost of debt, which is going to be our cost of debt. And so we only have two observations, so it's going to be somewhere in between those two. And we get something is 1.84. Oops. We want to make it a little bit prettier. So our cost of debt for Microsoft before tax cost of debt, based on a small sample. Obviously, when you do this for your project, you're going to have to look at all the bonds traded for the company. And I've, I've seen as many as I mean, there are some companies have hundreds of bonds trading, so you want to take a look at how many bonds are trading uh, before selecting your company. But in this case, our cost of debt, which in many is we're going to say R sub D cost of debt, is this 1.849%. So uh, you actually need to divide this in order to, to use the same formulas or to, to put, all, put it all together for the, for the weighted average cost of capital, what you want to do at this point is actually divide this by 100 to put it in percentage. So because the you want to put everything in percentages. So now it's in percentages. So it's uh, so there's the same number. That's our cost of debt in percentage. So that is the cost of debt. Now to add taxes, we want to always you want to know what the after tax cost of debt is because tax interest payments are actually tax deductible, so that reduces our actual cost of debt. And there are many ways, again, to estimate the tax rate. Um, sometimes you can use a uh, federal tax rate, just a general tax rate. Other times you can find the information in their financials. And so let's just do a quick and see if we can find our tax rate. Um, 
So again, there's many different ways you can estimate this. So let us take a look at, so here we have with uh, Microsoft, right there it's going to tell us, uh, give us a kind of an estimate. Now, it's very difficult because you can just see over the last few years, so what we have here are our uh, yearly financials of Microsoft and their income tax, income tax expense has, uh, has varied greatly. Now, um, now, however you estimate this, just state how you estimate it. So corporations, uh, again, their, their tax rates can be quite volatile based on many different factors. Uh, just eyeballing, I mean, I would go through a more systematic approach uh, in a project, but just looking at it, you could say, well, the net income uh, over the last, you know, here, here's a whole bunch of net incomes right here, 40, about 43 billion, 35 billion, 29 billion, 27 billion. Here's your income tax expense, five, you know, five billion, four billion. Now here's a huge, I don't know, something, this is why it's so volatile. Um, so most years it looks like they're paying about a 10%. This year they, they bumped it up to over a 40%, 50%. So, but if I were just looking at this and trying to use a, a decent estimate, I, 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 would, I could feel comfortable using a 10%, 10% uh, corporate tax rate. Someone could use 15%, someone could use a higher rate. Uh, there's many different ways, but just for the sake of uh, brevity, let's use a 10% tax rate. So in this case, we have a tax rate of 10%. We'll make it a percent. So we have a 10%. So to estimate the cost of debt after taxes, you're going to deduct you're going to deduct the tax rate. So we have our 1 minus our tax rate. So the formula for after tax cost of debt, after tax R sub D cost of debt is our cost of debt is R sub D times 1 minus the tax rate. So in this case we have a 10%. So 1 minus 10%. We can go ahead and fill in these information. So we have our cost of debt is this, 1.849. We have equals one minus our tax rate, 10%. Oops, what did I forget? Uh, nothing. So after tax cost of debt is simply this, cost of debt times one minus our tax rate, And this is going to, let's make this a lot smaller. So our actual after-tax cost of debt is, so after-tax R sub D is 1.6604. So that is how you calculate the after-tax cost of debt. Now again, I said this, be careful which company you choose. The, some companies have as many as, I mean, I've seen hundreds of bonds out, outstanding and you have to calculate the cost of debt of each one, figure out the total value of all outstanding bonds, find a weighted yield to maturity of each bond, and then sum that, and that's gonna be your cost of cost of debt before tax, and then estimate a tax rate. And, uh, but that is how you estimate the cost of debt, both before tax and after tax.